Open source software depends on contributions and peer review. But how does one contribute to an open source software, whether a developer or a non-tech savvy user? In this video, I'll teach you how to set up a local development environment of BTC Pay Server on Mac OS, though the tutorial will be valid for both Windows and Linux as well. This video is not just for developers. As a matter of fact, even if you're a non-tech savvy user, after watching this video, you will be able to deploy your BTC Pay Server on a PC. You will have your own private blockchain where you can make payments and test payments. And most important part will be uh, reviewing pull requests of developers. So you will be able to take a look at upcoming features in BTC Pay Server and test them even before they get merged. I will teach you how you can provide feedback and it does not have to be a code review. Of course, if you're a developer, you can review the code, but if you're just a user, you can test stuff out and hunt for bugs or just uh, provide UX feedback. Let's get going. We have lots of things to cover in this video. This tutorial will be done on a Mac, but the process is the same on Windows and Linux as well. So you'll go to BTC Pay Server documentation and you'll find local development document here. Up here we have a list of prerequisites that we'll need for this tutorial. Depending on when you're watching this tutorial, these prerequisites may change. Do not worry, always download stuff that we mention in documentation and not in the video because we can easily update documents but not the video. We'll need .NET Core SDK 3.1 and we'll need Docker. Let's click on the .NET Core and we can download it. Make sure to download the SDK part here. So just click download.NET Core. Next, we will also need Docker, so download it for your system. So right now we're simply downloading software and it will take a while for this to download. So just click get Docker. So we've downloaded uh, .NET, we've downloaded Docker and in order to review pull requests, I recommend GitHub Desktop. So we'll need GitHub Desktop. And we'll need uh, Visual Studio. So download Visual Studio. You can download it here, but I need to download the one for Mac. So I'll download it from here. If you're on Windows, of course, download the one for Windows. These downloads may take a while depending on your internet speed. And once everything is complete, we can start with installing the software. There is no real order here. I'll just uh, install software in order I downloaded it. So first uh, one is .NET SDK. So let's install .NET SDK. I'll not uh, handhold you throughout the installation of this software. It's pretty straightforward. But just understand that it may take a while for everything to be installed. So don't worry if your installation is taking a bit longer. After .NET SDK, let's install Docker. Once Docker installation is complete, we can install GitHub Desktop. I already have one installed on my PC, so I won't be installing it, but you should install GitHub Desktop. And finally, let's install Visual Studio. Of all of these, Visual Studio will take the most space and will take the longest time to install. As soon as Visual Studio installation is finished, they'll ask you to download the Xcode, so you can get it as well. Beginners who don't have GitHub will also have to register a GitHub account. We also need to register for Docker, so open your Docker. And in top right corner of your PC, you can just sign in or create a Docker ID. We will need this, so it's better to do it right away. Once again, let's recap what we've done. So we installed .NET SDK, we installed GitHub Desktop, Docker and Visual Studio Code. We've created account for GitHub, this is optional of course if you don't have one, and we created account with Docker and signed in into both. Uh, upon your PC restart, you'll see that Docker will start automatically. It may take a while for it to start, but you're sure that Docker is running once you see this green dot here. On Windows, you can locate Docker icon on bottom right corner, whereas on the Mac, it is up here. So as you can see, I'm signed up into my Docker. 
And the first thing we're going to do is clone BTC Pay server from GitHub. Upon opening GitHub Desktop, let's sign in. On Mac, it's a bit tricky. You have to go to Preferences and then sign in. And you can even sign in using browser. So I'll do that. I'll authorize the app and open back again in here. The first thing I should do is clone BTC Pay server repository. So let's do that. I'll click clone repository from the internet. Go to BTC Pay server main repository. So just copy it from here and paste it. You can select the folder where you want this to be created. And I will just do it in my downloads folder, for example. You can really use any local path you wish. Just click clone. So now we are fetching BTC Pay server and we'll be having it on our local machine. Now I won't go into branches, but when you click here, you'll see all of the branches of BTC Pay server. If you want to test current branch that is in production, that is master branch. However, this video is focused on pull requests and reviewing pull requests that developers submitted. So instead of branches, go to this tab, pull requests, and select any of the pull requests which you want to test. Let's say that I want to test this one. Of course, prior to selecting pull request, it is always a good idea to go to web version of the GitHub and just check what uh, this pull request is about. You can read the description and you'll know what to test. Select a pull request and wait for it to be fetched. And now click on show in folder. You'll see BTC Pay server folder, open it up. Let me just zoom this in for you. And what we need right now is to open this one. We will open BTC Pay server in Visual Studio. If you don't see the solution tab on the left, go to view and make sure that you're into debug view mode. First thing we need to do is go to the tests folder, open it up, right click on it, head back to tools and open it in terminal. Once in terminal, what we'll do is type in docker compose up dev. Click enter. And now you'll see that uh, BTC Pay server is being uh, composed here for the first time. So don't worry, it may take a while for all of these to load. So while that loads, just recap once again, make sure that for you are into BTC Pay server dot tests, you need to open it in command line and then you enter docker dash compose up dev. Once you see the message that you are ready to code and debug like a rock star, of course you're ready to go. So now go to main BTC Pay server project here. And you would choose a BTC Pay server docker rag test HTTPS if you want to test stuff in HTTPS. When you do that, go ahead and click the start icon here. I'll be debugging in Safari, but you can of course uh, change the browsers here. Now the process may take a while. If for any reason you do not see BTC Pay Server Docker rag test and stuff here, you probably need to restart your Docker or restart your machine. When the project is built, it will automatically start in Safari on your local host. Now you need to create your admin account. You can use whatever name you want. Make sure that you have that you're ad administrator of this instance and click create account. And now you're in BTC Pay Server rag test mode. The first thing we need to do is create our store and wallet in order to be able to test the payments. So depending on the pull request you'll be testing, you need to do different things, but when you're setting up your BTC Pay server locally for the first time, go to stores, create a new store, name it as whatever you like, I'll call it test store. Now we need to add our wallet. So scroll all the way to the bottom until you find derivation scheme find BTC, click modify, and now you need to add derivation scheme. In a reg test and when developing you can use any derivation scheme that you want. I go to Ian Coleman's BIP39 generator and I randomly generate the 
key here. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll paste the account extended public key. Head back to your BTC Pay server, paste it. It really does not matter when you're developing and testing stuff. This can be any XPUB key here. It does not have to be from your wallet. Click continue. If you want to enable Lightning Network, you can do that. Click modify. Just uh, click here to enable it. And that's basically it. Now, here goes the fun part. Dragtest is basically a private blockchain, which will enable you to generate funds for yourself and make transactions and even mining blocks. And that's very interesting. You'll be able to send thousands of Bitcoin if that's what you want. Now head back to BTC Pay server on GitHub and uh, in BTC Pay server tests, you'll see the readme document. What we want to do now is manually test payments. We want to make a payment to our own wallet that we just generated and we want to be able to spend that amount. So here is the command which you need to use. Head back to your GitHub desktop, go to show in folder, BTC Pay server. You can go to Fiverr services and open new terminal in this folder. This will make sure that you're always in an appropriate directory. Let me just zoom this in a little bit. First, we need to have an address in your BTC Pay server. Go to wallets and receive. Here you can generate an address for your wallet. Copy it and go back to the terminal. Now simply you can pa paste the commands here in order to make a payment. Make sure that you replace the address from the example with your own address that you generated and you can also alter the amount. So let's say that I want to send uh, 10 imaginary Bitcoin to my address. I would just need to paste the command and click enter. Now head back to your BTC Pay server, go to wallets and you'll now see that we have 10 Bitcoin in our wallet. That is amazing. Of course, this is all fake Bitcoin generated in rec test, but now we can send the funds, you can make payments uh, and do fun stuff. When you're testing a PR, of course, this is just a random stuff that you can, of course, test some other functions that we mentioned in this file. You can generate blocks and stuff like that. Uh, you can also make Lightning Network payments and so on. When you're testing a pull request, of course, and you will read what the pull request is about and you would test those features. You do not have to review the code. You can just test if it works, uh, how the payments work. You can make a payments, for example, since this pull request was about zero amount invoices, generate the zero amount invoice to see what happens. You can test the zero amount invoice and you'll see how it behaves. So you can then head back to GitHub and put a comment there. I tested it. It works as expected. It does not work. When testing a pull request, uh, be aware that not every pull request can be tested from the front end, which means that for some pull requests, you do have to review a code. If you're unsure of which uh, pull requests need user interface type of feedback, you can always ask in our development channel. And there you have it. I hope that this video was helpful and that you were able to figure out how BTC Pay server locally works and how you can play around with it. And most importantly, use it in order to improve your own skills and provide useful feedback for developers. And if you're a developer yourself, you can better test your code and the code of others. If you have any questions regarding the local deployment, feel free to join on our community chat where you can ask all sorts of questions. This video was made possible by the BTC Pay Server Foundation and all of our supporters. If you're a corporate entity looking to support BTC Pay Server contributors, make sure to check the BTC Pay Server Foundation website. We hope that this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.